Hello and welcome to the village on uh, a day where we still have snow on the ground as you can see from behind me. Now I'm going to be looking down quite a bit today and the reason is I don't want to slip and I'm not being a wuss. A couple of years ago now, maybe more, I slipped and uh, broke my ankle pretty badly and being an older guy now it's uh, not so easy to repair or quick to repair. So prevention is better than cure. So um, I did put some posts online. Oh, by the way, I apologize for the uh, bright sun in my eyes. It's not me, it's nature. Anyway, I did put a post up recently about what happened a couple of nights ago when we woke up with a massive wind, uh, very, very fierce wind, blew everything everywhere. And that was followed by some torrential downpours of rain. We live on a hill, so we don't get flooded, but the water just gusses down the hill past us. And if the store drains, storm drains in the village aren't clear, then we can get some flooding. The water normally flows off the hills into the River Verbas, which is the main river, I think. They say, some people say it's the Bosna, but they're both the main rivers of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Goes from the middle of the country, or south of the country rather, comes all the way north and joins the River Sava around the Croatian border. And then we have a small one called the Turinica, uh, and that sometimes does flood. So. In past years, we have uh, not been able to drive out of the village uh, as we're used to. Tamara's father's just arrived, by the way, and he's over there at the neighbours. They're going to slaughter a pig today because they'll then turn it into what they call winter food. So they uh, butcher it and then joint it up and dry it and smoke it make sausages and pork scratchings. We're not going to go and film that because a lot of people have said in the past uh, they don't like seeing that. So I'll be respectful to them. I, uh, I've been changing the channel somewhat recently. I'm going to come out of the sun because not only does it blind me, but I'm sure it gives you a lousy picture to view. But I've decided to do more walk and talk type videos and talking head videos from my like little office studio and do more storytelling that way than what I had been doing traditionally, which was vlogs. I'm still going to do some travel vlogs. I'll take you with me um, as much as possible. I promised Tamara that I'm going to keep her face out of it <laughs> unless she wants to. And you won't see much of her family when we do family things. And I think that's out of respect. But living out here is, it is wonderful for me. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for me it's wonderful. And I took some photographs. I put the drone up earlier on. I might include, no, what I'll do is wherever you see this, whether it's on my blog or on YouTube or wherever, next to it will either be a link or if it's a post within that post, uh, a video that I made with my, or filmed with my drone uh, a few hours ago. So you can see the immediate surroundings of where I, I live. Some of the pictures that I took this morning, I sent to my sister in uh, the Netherlands. She lives in the Netherlands now. He said, oh, this is picture perfect. And it is. People spend a lot of money on Christmas cards with this sort of scenery. But winter can be a little bit frustrating and unusual. Um, so, as I said, we had this storm, wind, followed by a downpour of rain, and then followed by snow. Now, the snow, to be honest with you, is now thawing and I would assume that within the next, I don't know, 
few hours, if not the end of today, the roads will be clear again. Um, we do have single track roads in our village and normally a tractor comes along with the plough on the front and clears the road, but it hasn't been, the tractor hasn't been here. So I can only assume that the authorities, village authorities have thought, well, we'll wait till it thaws. But when the snow did come, we started to experience power outages. So that's no electricity. And this isn't just on and off for half an hour. This is for hours at a time. And years ago, when we used to get lots of uh, snow dumps, maybe up to a metre, we don't get that now, global warming and all that. But then it used to be for a day. And when it's cold and you don't have electricity, um, yeah, it can be a, a burden, can be an issue. We have wood heating. So we have in our living room, a small wood burner, very cozy, keeps us nice and toasty down there. But our house is, and you can go back through all my content and see where we live. Uh, we live in what would have been the, the basement. I call it the ground floor now. And then we have an apartment upstairs that we rent. And both downstairs and upstairs have central heating through radiators with hot water, which the hot water comes from a central heating boiler in our utility room, but it's a wood burning boiler. So that's why the logs from the forestry, when we're allowed to get it, and Bosnia-Herzegovina is 48% covered in forestry, or we get wood from other sources, or we buy um, briquettes. So, yeah, you would think that when we have a power outage we, and it's winter, we could just put on the, the wood burner downstairs, except that the atmospherics sometimes aren't right. Do you know what I mean? And you try to light the fire and it won't take. In that case, we wrap ourselves up nice and, nice and warm. Something I've had to get used to. I still moan a lot about it. I shouldn't because it is what it is. And it's all part of living out here. But... I can't remember ever when I was a kid in London back in the day, in the late 1950s, early 1960s, about ever had, did I ever experience a, a power cut? I don't think so. But I've got used to experiencing them here. And as you can see behind me, we used to have all these trees were full of fruit. We have pear, apple, plum, uh, what else? I think we have some pears, yeah. But we definitely have apples, plums, there's walnut trees, uh, mushmula, which are medlars, which are quite rare, uh, but they do taste really unusual, unique, and, and they're nice. And we have grapes and we have blackberries. All that's gone. All dead now. There's some grapes along the fence here. I don't know, maybe we could have made ice vine out of them, but we don't have the uh, the facilities to do that. Picture postcard, what? Make sure I don't get that sun uh, in the way. If you want to give me any questions about where I live, what it's like being a retiree here, how my pension stretches, and it does. It would be miserable living in uh, England on the pension that I have, but I can do it here. I've had comments already, uh, and I've answered all of them as honestly as I can and transparently as I can about people saying, what's it like to be here? And there was a video on YouTube and on my blog where I addressed uh, the cost of living. Somebody has said, can you live on 5,000 US a month in Bosnia? And of course the answer was yes. But it did stimulate some responses from, you know, the negativity. And also people misreading the, what the video was about because uh, $5,000 is a lot of money here. Nobody earns that much. Well, there are people that earn that much, but not many. Um, 
And even in Europe, $5,000 a month is still a healthy wage. But somebody just asked, could I live on that where you are? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. But we have people now asking about coming here to live. Yeah, I don't know. It might be a dream to some people. I'm very, very lucky because I'm married uh, to a local and most of the foreigners, non-Bosnian or non-Balkan people that live here are married to local people. Uh, one or two have bought property here and you can buy property uh, in this country. I don't think it's all that expensive, but don't hold me to that one. Um, uh, and it's not all that complicated, but if I think that the out the generalization is If a Bosnian can buy property in your country or the country where you are, then there's a reciprocal arrangement I think the only The only big drawback here unless you are married to a local is um, Language Apart from that, it's cool. I Don't get involved in the politics and I don't think any foreigner should get involved in the politics and it's beautiful. And the people are friendly, without a shadow of a doubt. Amazing people, Balkan people, Bosnian people in particular. Although Serbians and Croatians are now going to say to me, we're friendly as well. You are. Everybody from this region is, is friendly. The air is clean here as well. I've only lived in a city, or in a Balkan city in Banja Luka, I think for six months out of all the years, the decades I've been here. And that was fun at the time. I was slightly younger, so I didn't mind going out to the pub and eating in restaurants, but it's slightly different out here. It's Tamara's birthday today, so I'm not going to stay out too long. Um, we're going to stay at home, snuggle up in our nice warm living room with that crackling wood burner. Her dad's next door. He's come up from the city. I'm sure later on tonight he'll come back. Uh, maybe we'll get some fresh meat. But that's not a given. And our, late, our nearest town is about, I don't know, four kilometres, five kilometres as the crow flies. But there's a river and no bridge in the way, so we have to go round. And Tamara says, shall we get a take-in? So we're going to have some uh, food from a restaurant that specializes in uh, the cuisine from the Serbian town of Leskovac. So I'm looking forward to that. No, I'm not going to be taking a video of it. So I hope you just enjoyed this quick chat. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of these. If they come across as a ramble, it is. But I think it's one of the nicer ways, the better ways to tell my stories. And if you are, wherever you are, seeing this and you're, let's say, over 50, do let me know because I'd like to see how your life is going. That would be interesting, for me at least. Oh, and in the winter here, it's not really eco-friendly, but I just love the smell of everybody's chimneys with all the smoke going out and you smell that wood. It's, I don't know, something that I used to dream a lot about. There was a kite in the air, or a couple, of, a pair of kites, buzzards, up there earlier on, but they're not there now, so I can only assume that they found breakfast, lunch and dinner for today. So, from me, David, here in the chilly Balkans today, to wherever you are, please do stay safe, uh, look after yourself, and vidimus opet, that means I'll see you again soon. Oh, by the way, yeah, if you see me on, if you've stumbled across my blog on the web, please do subscribe, it's free. And uh, if you've seen this on YouTube, then do the usual drill there. Uh, it really helps.
because I'm trying to raise awareness not only of my life as an older person, but also this beautiful country where I live. Hear the dogs? <laughs> I'll see you soon.